This video is all about my experience with the SRM X Power SPD power meter pedals, and I cover why they probably shouldn't be on your shortlist if you're looking at the next power meter for your bike. Okay, the SRM X Power, not a new power meter. They've been out for around one to two years, maybe a little more. They were announced a while ago. Availability has been a little sketchy, but they are definitely now on the market. There's not a lot of information out there on them, just a scattering of reviews and some user experiences posted online. And today, hopefully this contributes to that pool of information. Jumping straight to the technical specifications of these pedals, they are an SPD dual-sided entry pedal, so mountain bike compatible or gravel or whatever else you want to use them for. Plus or minus 2% accuracy claimed you can buy the single jewel or the bundle which comes with the PC8 head unit as well you'll get left right balance pedal smoothness torque effectiveness they do have temperature compensation I'm not quite sure if it's active temperature compensation though so let's go with a probably on that uh, you get amp blast you get Bluetooth however Bluetooth is a little weird you'll need to pair both pedals via Bluetooth unless you're in Zwift mode which has a little toggle switch which look let's go into that a little later on there's an iOS and Android app has a magnetic charger which is probably the worst kind of charge that I've used on any pedal. Battery, and here's where things come a little unstuck. Up to 30 hours claimed runtime, which really isn't a lot compared to what else is out there in the market at the moment. But the big catch there is there's a power draw in just standby mode of between two and 5% per day, which means if you're not using your bike or using these pedals, they'll still drain charge. Weight claimed 345 grams per pair without cleats. Pedal stack height 10.5 mil, Q factor 54 mil, the crank length range, I think it's the largest range we've seen through any power meter pedal, between 75 mil and 235 mil crank length supported. Firmware updates via Bluetooth, two years warranty, and the pricing, again, something else these come unstuck with, uh, at around $1,300 US and $5 short of the magic $2,000 mark here in Australia. Now I've always said if a power meter replaces a component on a bike, I believe that power meter needs to at least meet or exceed the quality of the component that it replaces. Now in this case, no exceptions, the SRM X Power is a brilliant SPD pedal. Standard stack height, standard Q factor for the pedal. I had no problems whatsoever riding these with SPD cleats. The installation of the SRM X Power requires one additional step compared to other power meter pedals, and that is calibrating the angle of installation. Just needs to be done once every time the pedals are installed. But the question is, is it a good power meter? And the short answer is no, it's not. And it's not just about the power accuracy either. It's battery life, battery drain. And for me, that's the showstopper with this product. More on that in a moment. First of all, onto the power data, I was using 1.51 of the firmware. I have 10 data sets of both indoors and out, totaling 17 hours of ride time. These pedals themselves only have 22 hours of total runtime, so they're relatively new. Covering off the basics, the data signal quality was fine, no dropouts and no issues there. However, they did take a few more seconds to wake up than the other power meters that I've had on the bike comparing them to. The calibration process was quite neat. The little LEDs do a little flash dance to let you know that both power meters are zeroed. But from there, things got a little complicated. On the baseline power meter that I was comparing these to, the Quark Axis Dub that I have on the gravel bike. Just a quick review of some data we have here. 191, 191 up against the Asioma Duo SPD Hacks. Uh, these things are like two peas in the pod outdoors. Really, really good, reliable, trustworthy, and really couldn't separate them over hours and hours of riding. So that's the baseline, the Quark D0 Dub, or the Axis power meter that I have on the gravel bike. Jumping into the first Llama lab test with the Doretto XR with the Quark D0 dub and the SRM X Power. After 25 minutes of warm up, we jumped into the steady state, just a steady state short there for the five minutes at the end section. 214, 215, Elite Doretto XR, Quark D0 dub. I'd call that pretty happy. 221 for the SRM X Power, trending a little higher. Now, depending on how you read your tea leaves, that might be okay. That's definitely within ballpark of plus or minus 2% but it was trending higher. And that was the theme that I was seeing both indoors and out across all my 17 hours of data. Quick sprint on the pedals and the X power just a little higher than the other two. Nothing's ever gonna be perfect indoors. Some get close, some, well, the SRM X power is jumping a little higher through the sprint. Overs and unders, 20 seconds. This is more of a trainer test than power. But 232, 233 on the Elite Dota XR and the Quark D0 dub, two peas in a pod, very happy. SRM X power a little higher at 241. Keeping that trend alive of reading just a little higher. The trainer flywheel speed test, Again, more of a test of the trainer than power meters. However, we can see some interesting trends here. Elite Dorito XR with a slow flywheel speed. Pretty much in line, it's quite happy. Changing down gears, and we see the XRM X power just spike a little higher. And then track okay-ish. 
with the Quark D08 up. Again, changing gears, power meters are like, uh, uh, what just happened? Let's stabilize. But the SRMX power also takes the opportunity to jump higher than the other two and rolling down through here. So the trend there, 220, 228, uh, we expect that difference with the flywheel speed spinning up really, really high and there being a discrepancy through here. SRM X power just trending a little higher, probably within spec of plus or minus 2%, but again, always showing to be a little higher. On to another sprint, another hill jam. Again, keeping with the trend, bouncing a little higher than the other two, uh, 1262, uh, as opposed to not even topping out at uh, what, 1100 watts there. So a little higher in the sprints indoors, Short ramp test, 232, 235, acceptable, 239, again, trending a little high, not too bad. And as I said, probably within that plus or minus 2%, but trending a little higher. Jumping to an outdoor ride, now I have tons and tons of outdoor ride data. I did put the SRMX powers on just before the Dirty Pig and Whistle gravel event a couple of weeks back, I rode them through there. The data that I saw from that ride was the same as what I saw yesterday out in the road, but let's pull up the latest data here. So Quark D0 dub, SRM X power overall numbers, which can be a little tricky to compare one for one with the starts and stops on two different head units. 187, 194, again, trending higher on the X power. Jumping into the sprint just here out the road. And again, SRM X power jumping a little higher again. And here's where things get a little tricky. Uh, it was, well, again, it was complicated. Grabbing a little section through here, what have we got? Three minutes, so 239 versus 250, no major starts and stops at all, but quite a big discrepancy there of, what's that, around 11 watts for three minutes. And a little further out the road, another little section through here. 249, 255, so things changed. That's only, what, six watts. So again, they've come a little closer. So one of the power meters is uh, changing its spots, so to speak. Which one? Well, I was stopping and trying to zero one meter and then riding again and trying to zero the others. That really didn't have much of an effect. Another section, almost immediately after that, with a smaller hill jam, 267, 273. Again, we're getting closer to being within spec of plus or minus 2%. And look, I don't wanna sit here and try and make excuses of why one power meter is plus or minus 2%, but it's plus 2%. And the other power meter being plus or minus one or 1 1.5 and, and justifying why it's to the extreme of the other end. I think the law of averages means that that's quite a rare occurrence that one power meter will be reading high by its specified power numbers and the other one reading low by its specified power accuracy numbers too. So anyhow. 267, 273, SRMX power trending a little high through here as it was uh, jamming on the pedals up that hill. Two more quick sections to have a look at. And you can see the trend that I'm getting at here, just reading a little high. So 209, 216, so again, that separation of uh, more than 2% of those two. Again, just here, 202, 206, so getting it a little closer. And just here at the end, another short little sprint. There's some stop starts here, so it's difficult to uh, to compare both numbers there. Uh, but we were also seeing the SRM X power read a little high there. I guess in summary, what I'm seeing is the SRM X power is reading a little high in steady states, both indoors and out. And in some cases, it's shifting around a little bit too, which is also a concern. In the sprints, always reading a little high, both indoors and out. Now, as I said, depending on how you read your tea leaves, where you believe the drivetrain loss should be and shouldn't be, and how companies should or shouldn't calibrate or active temperature compensate, this might be acceptable. For me, for what I do, I just can't trust this power meter. And that's a bit of a concern given that SRM is considered a gold standard or was in the past. With the SRM X powers reading a little high across all the data sets that I had, I did do a static weight test, which is by its name only a static test and only a single point test. It actually came out okay for that test on both sides, bouncing around 196, I believe, to 197 newtons with my 20.023 kilo weight on a 172.5 crank, which doing the math here on the website comes out to be, well, that's about right. While interesting, a static weight test on a power meter really isn't conclusive if a power meter is going to be accurate or not. You have to add in other factors such as cadence, movement, vibration, everything else into the picture and then look at the numbers. However, power numbers aside, it's the battery life, which for me is an absolute showstopper for these pedals. One of the tests I performed was taking a battery check on a Friday. I had left 75%, I had right 81%. I did six hours, 15 minutes of riding over the weekend. Did another battery check, I had left 42, right 48. So I lost 33% of battery on both sides over one weekend of riding. Now quick back of the envelope math, that's just under 19 hours of runtime. 
not the 30 hours claim, but that also includes a possible up to 5% per day battery drain for the pedals just to be existing in space and time. Not looking too good there. Another test, I took a measurement just before I did the Mega Pretzel on Zwift, so 39%, 41% left and right. I rode for four hours doing the Mega Pretzel. At the end of that, I had 27%, 30%, so I lost 12% and 11%, let's call it 11 and a half average on one ride. Now that equates to around about 34.78 hours of runtime. That's not too bad, a little better than the spec claimed. However, factoring in another 20 hours of that day where I wasn't riding, maybe the next day again, fudging it up by a few percent, it's coming in around, what, 25 hours or so battery life? Look, whichever way I carve this up, the battery life on these things are not good. Spider power meters last for months. You stick a CR2032 in those and forget about them. Even the Asiomas lasting between 50 to 55 hours of runtime, that's enough time to forget where you put your charger before the things need to top up. The SRM X Power feel like a baby that's waking up throughout the night and continually needing to feed. Look, packing everything into the spindle is no mean feat. Comparing the other power meter pedals for SPD out there on the market, Garmin packed the battery into the pedal body and everything else into the spindle, which does beef out the size of the pedal just a little bit. For Vero Asiyama, the SPD hack that we do, everything's packed into that pod, and we do have to modify our shoes for that. So SRM have packed everything into the spindle, which is super cool, but at the cost of battery life. So in summary, my experience with these pedals, what I've seen here to date, the X-Power does not really live up to the expectations of something with this price tag and with the SRM logo stamped on it. Four issues that I'll summarize. Geez, talk about accuracy. Four issues that I'll summarize. Number one, the battery life, not even close to what the other power meters out there on the market are doing. Number two, the power data and consistency. It just really wasn't what I was expecting or what I could use as a trusted power source to compare others to. Indoors, it was a few watts off. Outdoors, it was between 10, six, 12 watts off, depending on the phase of the moon, I guess. It just wasn't what I'd expect to be on the market in 2022. Number three, the charger, probably the worst I've used for any power meter out there on the market. And the dual BLE pairing, or the single BLE pairing with the Zwift toggle. Look, that's all too hard. It simply needs to be one amp plus connection or one Bluetooth connection to the pedals to stop the user from having to become an expert on which protocol, which system, how is it gonna all hook up? We just don't need to see that. Look, taking all four of those issues and applying those to, say, the experience from the Garmin Rally XCs or the Favero Asiom, is it's a completely different user experience with those other options on the market. SRM were first to market with this SPD power meter pedal and I really hope they're first to market with a second generation SPD pedal that addresses a few of these hiccups that I've encountered. So in short, with the premium price tag and the SRM name, these pedals are a complete letdown. Would I buy them? Would I ride them? No, not in their current state. There are better options out there on the market for sure. Okay, wrapping this one up for today. That's been my experience with the SRM X Power Power Meter pedals. Latest firmwares, latest updates, and yeah, an experience that just really wasn't that great. Let's see what they've got up their sleeve for future products. And with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.